name's John. Welcome to a short series of videos where we're going to be installing a digital readout, a DRO, onto this EM16 milling machine. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Basically, I'm a motor mechanic. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Double Boost. And on this channel, I do engineering work. I do some casting. I have a friend who has a steam wagon, or often with a steam wagon. I have a fair mixture of things, and my channel is quite popular. As a guy emailed this, old gentleman, retired, and this is his milling machine, his mini mill, and he's asked me if I would like to install the DRO kit for him, because I don't think he's quite sure how to, to do it himself. There's one or two videos on YouTube showing how to install DROs on the similar machines, so this is going to be another one of them, but probably a little bit more in depth, and hopefully with some better camera work. I've had a look at the machine and basically I'm quite impressed with it. It's got a vast X and Y axis travel for the size of the machine. The wheels are nice and smooth to operate both ways. There's no apparent backlash anywhere. It's got a quill on it. It's got a digital readout on the quill, but I'm going to put a free axis on. I'm going to start off putting the axis on here, the Y axis. That's going to be fairly straightforward. The Z axis is straightforward, but the X axis could be a little bit of a problem. There isn't much room at the front, but seeing that it has got a lot of travel, so I might end up putting it on the back. That's what most people seem to do. That's one of the scales that come with the, the kit. I've got the full kit here. Quite nice. Uh, you can actually get a smaller scale, it would have made it easier, but these are what I've got, so these are what I'm going to be fitting. I have got a decent workshop, I've got a bigger, much bigger milling machine than this. I could basically take the column off, clamp this in a vase and just mill all these faces flat to mount the DRO. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to use a lot of hand tools to do it. And I'll not use this mill but I'll not machine anything on my mill that couldn't be machined on this mill. I've also got a lathe as well so I'm quite looking forward to it. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer and show you some of the the ideas I've got for mounting this. This is the shortest of the three scales. This is the one that's going to be mounted under there like that. You mount these basically with a rehead at the bottom. You don't put it that way up because all your water, any cooling water or bits of metal are going to try and get into there. So it goes that way up. It also comes with a mountain bracket. Mountain bracket goes on there. Scale goes onto the mountain bracket. And there's a shield that goes on top of there, which keeps it all nice and clean and tidy underneath. So basically I'm going to mount this onto that flat face there. I'll have to space it down slightly because I've got the dovetail and I've got the feed screw for the x-axis table. So it's going to be mounted, something like that. And when you wind the table in and out, this will move and the reed head will be mounted solid. This is in an angle, so I'll have to make a, a spacer piece, a wedge spacer piece to go in there to make sure the reed head is held at the correct angle. One advantage I've got with this milling machine compared to mine is I can physically pick it up and turn it around. It's heavy but I can't move it. So that scale there it's going to be mounted onto there. The, the mounted holes they have provided aren't a great lot of use. I can put holes in whatever I need. You'll have to space down slightly from the lead screw. If I can put a couple of packing pieces in there. And then when the table's wound back, that'll move back with the table. The reed head's going to be mounted under there. So the finished assembly will look something like that. It's very important that the scale is mounted parallel to the table. It's nice it being up at that end, down at that end, it's got to be mounted square and parallel. At the minute I've got a mounted clamp onto the table that way and it's pushed up against two parallels that way so that's got to be in line with the machine, it can't be anything else. If you had it running at an angle like that it means when you move it, it puts a load on your sensor, which is what you don't want. 
the sensor should run nice and free with no load on. Bollocks. So basically, we'll mark two and more mountain holes, drill two holes in this, and I'll show you a little tip for drilling and tapping the holes into the actual casting of the mill so you get them nice and straight and true. And I'm just going to drill them freehand. This is the end of the table where we're going to mount the guide. It's going to go up to the top like that, and as I said, it'll be spaced away from there. There's a lot of meat on here. I want to put my bolt holes probably in the bottom third of it. There's a screw there, that's an adjust that screw for the gab on the to, to take up any play on the table. Before I fasten this on for real, I set that up for them. It's a simple case of a taking it off if you ever need to adjust that. You shouldn't really need to adjust it in normal use. The bolts I'm going to use are 5mm cap heads that's supplied in the kit. As I've said, that's going to go on there, like that. And I want my bolt holes basically in line with that one there. So I'll ignore that one. I'll drill one bolt hole there and one down towards the bottom of the table. And they're going to be two mountain points that hold that on. It's stiff enough that it won't give any problem as far as flex goes. I'm going to put a, use that centre line for the holes. I'm going to put one near that end. And one down towards that end, just to ignore that one. Two bolts will be more than enough to hold this on. So we'll have one there, one there, and they're going to go into the strong part of the casting. There's loads of meat there, and it's only a five mil bolt. I'm going to drill the bracket on my milling machine, but it could be equally as well drilled on the machine that actually fit in the DRO2 couple of parallels underneath there, gentle tap down, right we need to pick up that hole there, right that point is running dead through the access to the machine and I'm simply going to eyeball it into that slot which is there up to that hole which is there. You can eyeball it within two or three thou quite easily. Right, we're going to go through with a 5.5mm drill. Right, we now need to count up all the hole so the cap head disappears like that. I'm going to use a milling cutter to put the counter board in. This is the only time you use a milling cutter in a drill chuck. Bring that down to the touches, just touches. Now I have got a DRO on this mill, so I can use that to wind up the Z-axis to put in the five mil. Right, and the bolt is quite happy down below that. We've got the milling cutter mounted, so we'll bring that down until it just touches, which is there. Lock off the quill. You can see the z-axis. Z axis is zero, simple case, start the machine up and wind in for five and a half mil.
5.5. If you didn't have a, a mill cutter, you could just use a drill with the end ground square. Just deburr the holes, do it straight away, and you won't forget. It takes any rags off. Right, I've got the guide clamped onto the table. These are joiners clamps. These are other sort of clamps you've got to use to do the job. So it's clamped hard against the table there, and it's clamped hard against those two parallels. So this piece of aluminium has got to be running parallel to the table. What we need to do now is transfer those drill holes onto the casting with the punch mark. To do that, we use a transfer punch. That's a tight fitting punch that fits in that hole, a 5.5 mil punch. A nice gentle tap, just to put a mark in it. That's all it needs. Now if we remove the clamps. I've got two nice light punch marks where I need to drill and tap. I'm going to make the punch marks deeper with a proper centre punch and then show you a method of freehand drilling but making sure that we'll get the hole nice and square and true into there. I've got several centre punches but the thing I find the best is a new old tap. People say it'll shatter. Well I've done it for the last 20 years and I haven't shattered a one yet. Right now I'm at the stage we need to drill two holes in there, two 4.2 mil holes so I can tap them 5 mil. I'm going to use a cordless drill to drill the holes. What I'm not going to do is guess that the drill is square. There's a simple jig you can use to ensure that you don't drill the whole square. All it is is a square bit of steel. It's got two holes drilled in. One's 4.2, that's a tap and drill size. And one's 5mm, that's a clearance hole for the tap. I've got a 4.2mm tap and drill with a point on the end. You simply hold that into there. Push that through there, hold it into your pop mark, and then clamp clamp this bar onto the machine, and then you use that as a drill guide, push your drill through, and your drill can't go anything else except square to the job, nice and true. Once again, these are join us clamps. Put it in the bottom because I'll be working at the top. These are with three arms, this, but unfortunately, I've only got the two. Right, so that goes into there. Oh, come on, you bastard. What a snivelling bastard this is. Oh, how much you on? Right, so the third hand help is there, and that's. I'm flat against the face, so now we're going to drill that hole. You know full well that this block is going to keep the drill nice and accurate. I'm going to put 13 mm of thread in there, half an inch of thread, so I need to put a bit of tape on there so I know when the thread's deep enough. Put a little bit of cutting oil. You can see how that holds the drill nice and level. Soft cast in so it drills quite easily. Right, that's my first hole. Now we use the same jig to line up 
the top, so that's clamped on there with a 5mm clearance hole in line with the drilled hole. It's just held in, in place. And this all this doesn't make sure that the top goes in nice and straight. Plug top to finish it off. There you got the first wood drilled and topped. The second hole has been drilled and tapped in exactly the same way. It's a gentle, gentle deburr of the edge of the holes. Right in there, straight in. There is a little bit of room, a little bit of wiggle room on the board holes, but not much. One thing I have noticed, there's very little clearance between the edge of the aluminium and the casting here. So what I need to do is machine a little bit off the back face of that. You can just fine it off, but I've got a mill machine, so I'll put it in the mill and I'll just whisper that. Just take, put a chamfer, just take that, that back corner off. It's just catching, it's just caught the paintwork. So all we need is a little, a little shrimp for taking it off there. Right, I've taken a little bit more off, so now we've definitely, we'll definitely have plenty of clearance. I'll try it on again. That's much better, I can see down the back there's loads of, loads of clearance there now. Excellent. Next thing is to mount the scale on and then we'll see how we're going to go about mounting the actual pickup head on the here. I think I'll have it tied up with the tools first. Right, the scale goes on that way with a wire pointing towards the back. Holes are slotted, so you've got a lot of adjustment. But the way we mounted this, we set that bracket up dead level on packing pieces, so we should be able to get it running very accurately without a great lot of adjustment. But there is a lot of screw up for movement. I've taken the, the lock screws out of it, so now the reed head does move. This plastic thing. It's good for lining up because that's that's holding the reed head in the ideal position. You have got a little bit of tolerance, but not a great lot. I'm trying to work at home. I'm going to mount this. as loads of options. There's actually they're threaded through there. So what I think I may do is bring a bracket off here and up to there, and then put bolts in. They do supply some brackets. I'll probably be able to utilise one of these bolt the bracket onto there, we'll shorten it down and then utilise those two. The problem is this face is not flat, it's got a very slight taper. 
The reason it's a taper is because it's a casting and they put taper on castings, what they call a casting draft. I mean, I could take the table off, put it in my milling machine, mill that flat and it would be easy, but I want to try and do it either using this machine or using hand tools. That is another way of making a mountain that's fully adjustable and very rigid that you can actually go straight on top of the paint with because you find if you start taking the paint off there'll be a lot of filler and all kinds inside the casting <coughs> you can see the supply quite a few mountains those ones are die cast that's a piece of nice aluminium angle I think I'll probably end up going with this That's the table fully back, so I mark where the centre needs to be in a fully back position. We'll bring it all the way forward and just make sure that I can get the full travel. I think the scale is long enough if the scale is applied for this particular mill. It's amazing how much travel this has actually got for such a small machine. And that's it all the way forward. So it's going to have to be a compromise between all the way forward and all the way back. All the way forward the way I would have it because the piece at the back is probably the bit you're not going to use. That's actually under the tape, under the quill there. But when it's all the way back, it's in the middle of nowhere. There are the four adjuster bolts on the bottom of the bracket. So I'm going to just to make sure it's square. Just a simple case of winding down. The little glove screws and once it's bolted down you can adjust it, I'll use a clock here to set it up so it's lying nice and square so the screws come through the bottom to take up any taper so basically that's going to be sitting nice and square like that we'll put the two, we'll drill the two holes, drill and tap them Mount it on loose, see them up and jack those screws up to get it lying the way we want it. Just going to do one of these at a time. Right, so by tightening and loosening. These four grub screws we can jack the plate in any plane we want to make sure it's lying nice and square. This steel bench is fairly flat and the plate's certainly lying nice and true that way. I'll put a clock gauge on and run the clock along it and make sure it's running parallel to the axis of the table. Once, it, once it's set up and these are fully tightened, it bites on the points on the four cap heads and that makes a very firm mount that just won't move. It's no use trying to bore something flat onto that paint because it's, a, it's an unknown surface. I've got a clock cage set up which is going to measure how parallel this bracket is compared to the bed of the machine. As you can see, it's it's pretty good. Wants to come out very slightly. I've got the bolts nipped up snug, but not not fully tightened.
I'm not quite sure what the tolerances should be. It does tell you in instructions, but this is within two or three thousandths, which is. Right, I'll tighten the cap heads up and we'll try it again. Classic tool abuse there. That's good. We need to make sure that this face here, the top of the scale, is running through and parallel to the bed of the machine. I know it's got to be that way because it's bolted directly under the side of the cross slide, it can't be anything else. So we take it. I'll just move it slightly. It's Actually not bad dad. Moving very very slightly. These holes are slotted. So that's tightened up. Slightly low at this end. There's very, very little in it though. Two to three thou, that's well within the tolerance. I'll lift this end up very slightly so we'll get it perfect. Slightly, very slightly more. I think I'll settle for that. One thing I have done when I machined this bracket, I used it the wrong way around. That should have been the base. These slotted holes don't line up with the holes in the reed head. That one does. The other one needs to be there. So it's a simple case of machining the slot in there, and I can cut some of that off as well. I've measured the distance between the reed head in the bracket by holding that up against its plastic packing piece I use the parallel and some feeler gauges so I'll measure that Three point seven, three point seven five mil. what I have got is the piece I cut off the bracket 5.93 so I can machine that down to 3.75 it's already got the two holes in, I'll just nip the ends off and that'll go in there and then we're getting very near for a, a try. Just to touch this off. Zero, dead axis. Put a one wheel cut on first. I'm 
I've got the packing piece machine down to thickness. Cut the ends off. That goes into there. Like that. We'll take the transit piece out, the plastic packing piece. Gently nip up the mountain bolts. And that reed head is mounted just where it should be with no tension on it at all. Right now we'll clear the bench off, get the display out and give it a try. Display head. A two fifty volt input. And that's the Y axis. There's also an earth lead goes between here and the here and the mill. Power it up. Looks good. <coughs> it certainly works. Right, that's fully to the front, all the way to the forwards. I don't think it'll go all the way back because the scale's not quite long enough. That's it stop there. It's got 100 130 mil of travel. And that settles it for me as enough distance in the back to get the other. There's enough room to get the other scale in there. So that's the way I'm going to do it. You better have a longer scale and had the full travel. But it's still quite a an amazing amount of travel for a small machine actually. Zero. Five inches. That's it. The core that goes over the top of it. I could have done this the way. I could have mounted the scale under the bottom and put the reed head on. But I think this is a better way of doing it to me. So if it was me, it's the way I would do it. And you've got the scale coming out of the back, but it's not going to be a problem. It's not. It doesn't come out that far. Are you pleased with that? I think I'll do the, the Z-axis next, the big one up here, and leave the hard one to last, I think. <laughs> 